Corrine. Marsha. I really thought you said we were done with brains. Uh, I kind of lied. Ugh, but I'm so done with brains. <laughs> but it's not the brain the way you think of the brain. It's endocrine. Oh, brain. endocrine. All right. It's the so. brain that wants to take over the world. <laughs> so we get to talk about the hormones. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, huh? Okay, so these four things we need to know on the brain we've already found before, right? Yep. But now you're talking endocrine. Right. All right. So the first one is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, we know, is in the diencephalon. And it is connected to the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is held to the hypothalamus by the... Infundibulum! (laughs) Infundibulum is going to pass both blood and hormones and nerves down to our pituitary gland. So the hypothalamus is going to be... Making a whole bunch of hormones. It release it makes releasing and inhibiting hormones that are going to control the pituitary. It also makes ADH, which is the anti-diuretic hormone, as well as oxytocin. Now it can't store those, so it relies on half of our pituitary gland, which we call the posterior pituitary gland, to hold on to ADH and oxytocin. So the posterior pituitary gland really doesn't make diddly at all. All it does is release ADH and oxytocin when necessary. It's just a storage container. Oh, poor posterior pituitary it gets used. Just shove it in the back. Now the anterior pituitary, on the other hand, is going to be a full on endocrine gland. It is going to be making and releasing six separate hormones. Six? And no, it's a busy body. Couldn't Ooh. it share with the posterior? Apparently wow. not. Um, The first one is the thyroid stimulating hormone. That is going to stimulate the thyroid. Imagine that. We also have ACTH, which is called the adrenocorticotropic hormone. Um, And then FSH and LH we'll talk a lot about in the reproductive unit. That's the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Found in both males and females, though originally found in females. Mm -hmm. Males don't really have follicles. Hmm. And then we have prolactin, which will also be in both males and females, mostly in females during lactation, and the human growth hormone, which we all get. Yes, we do. Now, there's one more little gland on the hormone that we cannot forget. No. Oh, so oh, tired. Oh, Corrine, what's what's wrong? Is your pineal gland in overdrive? It is. I'm making so much melatonin. Melatonin. It's late. It's late. So melatonin is going to be made by the pineal gland in response to light and help us sleep a little bit. I got. Oh, we still got to move on to okay. our next one, which is our thyroid and our parathyroid. Parathyroid? Parathyroid. Not just one, but a parathyroid. Uh, and there's really eight. Okay. Green. There's I'm, eight of them. Hey. Okay. I'm working my stuff here. So man. now this model is huge. This is a model of the larynx, which includes the hyoid bone at the top. Remember that? Helps you, you know, move your tongue around. <laughs> um, but on the bottom here of the um, thyroid cartilage is the thyroid gland. Um, the thyroid gland is going to be producing three separate hormones. We often refer to two of them together as our thyroid hormone, T3 and T4, and then calcitonin. Now remember calcitonin. I think so. Yeah, I think we covered it a bit in 244 when we talked about calcium. Oh? Yes, between calcitonin and one other hormone, which is going to be found on the back of this model. See these little tiny pink dots? That is a parathyroid. Um, Some of us have up to eight of those on the back of our thyroid, and they only make and release one hormone, the parathyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. Um, Going to be kind of the antagonist to calcitonin to help us regulate calcium levels and bone construction. Wow. I knew. Should we take a look at this little Oh, yeah. This one little model we also have in the lab of the thyroid. This is kind of just the mini version of that larynx that has a little thyroid on the right side instead of the left side. Ready to move on? I think so. We're going to be moving down um, into our thoracic cavity now by looking at this picture. 
we do not have a model in the lab of the thymus. So if you look kind of close, right there in the middle of the chest, it is in the thoracic cavity. Um, the thymus is mostly responsible for our immune system and helping our white blood cells mature. So it does make two hormones. Pretty post it. Pretty post it. Um, that are thymulin and thymopoietin. So again, those are going to help us with white blood cell production, maturation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have one more endocrine gland here that we don't often think of as an endocrine gland, which is why we now see a great big heart. heart. Now, main function of the heart, you don't think of, oh yes, endocrine. Not so much. We think lub dub. Lub -a -dub. Pump the blood. Pumping the blood all over the body. Now, because there's blood going through here all the time, the heart does a really good job at monitoring blood pressure. So it does release one hormone. Um, that one hormone is called the atrial natriuretic hormone, or peptide. A and P, A and H, they're the exact same thing. You'll see them all over the place. Um, this is actually the only hormone that our body produces to help us lower blood pressure. Um, all the other hormones we're going to talk about with blood pressure actually help to raise the blood pressure. So I think we're done with thoracic, yes, right? Yes, we are. So we're going to move down to abdominal in a moment.